Tonight we are getting a new understanding of the events that led to the killing of Yolo County Sheriff's Deputy Tony Diaz on a remote country road nearly four years ago. At the same time, we're also getting a better appreciation of the danger Deputy Diaz faced the night he died and the potential danger any officer faces each time they go on parole. Now, this understanding and appreciation all comes from video shot by a dash camera in Deputy Diaz's patrol car. Prosecutors used it to convict Marco Topete and send him to death row last month. The video you're about to see does not show Tony Diaz being shot, but it does show him before and after. You will hear gunfire. You will see shattering glass. As KCRA 3's David Beenick reports tonight, all of it was key evidence in a murder trial where there were no eyewitnesses. Father's Day 2008. You're looking through the windshield of a Yolo County Sheriff's patrol car. Deputy Tony Diaz has just pulled into the pilot gas station near Dunnigan. Drivers are pumping gas. Families are eating hamburgers. What catches Diaz's eye is this blue Ford Taurus, the subject of a law enforcement alert put out hours earlier after a drive-by shooting in Woodland. As turns on his flashing lights, which activates his dash camera's microphone. Red window is Marco Tepete, a Norteño gang member who's been drinking and has his four month old daughter in the back seat. Diaz gets out, pulls out his gun. Defense lawyers will later claim that Tepete fears for his life at this moment and makes a split second decision to flee. Pete turns left on the County Road 99W, a two-lane road that parallels I-5, seen off to the left. At speeds approaching 100 miles an hour, Diaz chases after Tepete, past farm fields and through the town of Dunnigan. Two minutes into the chase, Tepete makes a sudden U-turn and pulls into the deputy's lane. Prosecutors will later say at trial that aiming his vehicle proves Tepete was already trying to kill Diaz. Thirty seconds later, Tepete makes another turn towards Diaz. Then turns down County Road 5. Here, the pavement ends. Clouds of dust kick up. And after a thousand feet, Tepete discovers there's no way out. Tepete swings his car around one more time. Diaz does the same. By the time Diaz emerges from the dust, Tepete's car is pulled to the side. The driver's seat is empty. Tepete gone. Diaz radios dispatch that he believes Tepete has run off to the right through a freshly plowed field. Diaz doesn't know that Tepete has in fact gone to the left, circling around a house and pulling an AR-15 semi-automatic assault rifle out of its case. Investigators will later say that Diaz was standing next to his patrol car, shining his flashlight at that empty field with his back to Tepete when the first shots fired. 17 shots in 3.9 seconds. Those last three shots are Diaz firing back. He's hit in the chest through his Kevlar vest and he's bleeding into his lungs. But he's still alive. So he takes cover in front of Tepete's car and calls for help. Diaz puts his hand to his side near the spot where he's been hit. Tepete is on the loose. The baby's still in the back seat. After a few moments, Diaz takes cover behind his own patrol car and waits alone and in the dark. 40 seconds after his initial call for help, a siren wails. 
summoning Dunnigan volunteer firefighters to the station. It will be 12 minutes before help arrives. Deputies John Campos and Hector Batista are the first to reach Diaz. They run to him. And as they help him away, he's still talking. At first, no one, not even Diaz, realizes how badly he's hurt. Meanwhile, Tepete has dropped the rifle in some leaves and is running away. He won't be found until the next morning, 10 hours later, hiding on the other side of I-5 in a clump of eucalyptus trees. But for now, the deputies have no idea where Tepete is, and Diaz is getting worse. As the patrol cars back away, a helicopter will soon be on the way. Rescuers decide instead to take Diaz by ambulance to Woodland Memorial Hospital, but a pathologist will later determine that from the moment he was wounded, no amount of medical care could have saved Deputy Diaz's life. Now, later that night, the Sacramento SWAT team returned to the scene in an armored vehicle. They still did not know where Marco Tepetti was at that point, but they came back to get two things. Tepetti's baby girl, who was still sitting unharmed in the back of that car, and that dash camera video that would help convict Marco Tepete and send him to death. About after having seen this again, how powerful is, is he to be there by himself, a law enforcement agent, and doing his job, and also how powerful the evidence was in the case, and, and how, how many times did, have they had to use the dash cam video in, in Yolo County? Do they have them in all the cars? In 2006, after another sheriff's deputy in Sacramento County was murdered in similar circumstances out on a country road, the sheriff of Yolo County decided that he wanted to have dash cameras installed in all of his patrol vehicles. In Jeffrey Mitchell's case, there was no dash camera. There was no recording of what happened. That murder case, to this day, is still unsolved. And so again, a very powerful tool. Yeah, yeah, and as we said in the beginning, no witnesses. The dash cam was the only thing that saw this. In a way, we are now all witnesses.